Yo, what is going on my tribe? I apologize for how my voice sounds, but it's because I'm under the weather. But today's Elden Ring video, it's an insanely powerful frost bleed build that grabs what makes bleed build so OP and adds on top of it the power of frostbite for a great burst of damage that obliterates enemies. And what better drip to have than a frozen Nazgul or Ring Wraith from Lords of the Rings? with the option of using your regular meta bleed armor if you want to maximize your damage. It's an awesome melee build that you can't miss. And the good thing is that you can start setting it up even before mid game while slowly improving it while you progress to end game. But let's jump right into it. Game on. They are the Nazgul, ring wraiths, neither living nor dead. The crazy amount of damage of this build comes from triggering both Hemorrhage, aka Bloodlust, and Frostbite at an enemy or boss. With Bloodlust applied, you will do 15% of a normal enemy max HP as damage and 10.5% on most bosses. With Frostbite applied, you will inflict 10% of a normal enemy's max HP as damage and 7% on most bosses, and adds a debuff to the enemy, increasing all damage taken by 20% for 30 seconds. So you want to trigger both as quickly as possible. It's pretty fast when you do a wield two cold grave scythes that at max level each will have 127 frost buildup and 50 blood loss buildup. We can accelerate the frost buildup even more using the chilling mist as a war on both weapons, each getting buffed with 60 frost buildup per hit for 40 seconds. Although it won't show on your weapon stat information, but this buff stacks with any frost buildup you have on your weapon. In this case, with the 127 frost buildup that each weapon has at max level. Now the bleed will trigger just by doing your regular dual wielding jumping attacks and combos. Now to increase even more your damage output over time, especially on a boss fight, because irregular enemies will die pretty quick when you trigger frostbite and bleed, is resetting the frostbite debuff by hitting the enemy with fire. I'm not using any incantations, so it has to be a weapon with fire stat in it. So I decided to have a third grave scythe with fire affinity to use it when I see the frostbite trigger. It will reset it and you can build up frostbite again and do that crazy 7% of max HP on a boss. This step is optional. You can continue to do damage to the boss with your regular debuff of 20% increased damage taken, but I recommend the resetting technique, which is totally bananas. Comment down below if you reset the frostbite when you play frost builds. The weapon that I'm using in this build is two grave scythes, like I mentioned earlier. Both reapers have cold affinity and have the chilling mist ash of war that I used to buff both previously before any tough encounter. At max level it scales C with strength and D with dexterity and intelligence. Each grape scythe will have physical damage and magic damage because of the cold affinity. So I thought having more intelligence will benefit more, but making a few tests in the game, adding points in dexterity will result in bigger damage than investing the same amount of intelligence points, even though both are D in the scale stat info. With very low attributes requirements, you can start using this weapon early game. Uh, you just have to farm it from skeleton mages in graveyards. And the best early spot where you will find three of them is the west of the lake facing cliff side of grace at the start of Leornia Lakes. For the rest of the armaments, I have one king dagger to apply the golden bio ash of war and a finger seal to apply flame grammy strength. Also a third grave scythe if I want to reset the frostbite debuff on an enemy or boss. The armor that I'm using in this build could resemble a Green Reaper or the Nazgul from Lords of the Rings. It's pretty accurate with the black robe, the non-existent face, and the armor beneath it. And the best pieces to achieve this in the game is Fia Set, comprised of the hood and the robe, and can be obtained when you finish Fia's questline. The rest of the armor I'm using is the Black Knife Gauntlets and the Black Knife Greaves. This armor mix will have very low protection and poise, so if you want to increase the physical defense, you will need to add a talisman like the Dragon Crest Great Shield to help with that. And since this is an also a bleed build and will deal most of your damage with dual wheel combos and jump attacks, you can pop in the White Mask and the Raptor's Black Feather chest piece to maximize your attack power. I recommend using them when you enter endgame. 
The talisman that I'm using in this build are first claw talisman to increase by 15% your jump attack damage while dual wielding the grave scythe. Next is the Lord of Blood Exaltation that will increase attack power by 20% for 20 seconds when Bloodlust has been triggered on the enemies or bosses. Next is the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman that will reduce the physical damage taken by 20%. This is a flex talisman that you can switch if you are comfortable playing without it or you take no damage on your playstyle. So you can switch it with the Ritual Sword Talisman or Rotten Wing Sword Insignia or Millicent Prosthesis or even the Green Turtle Talisman if you want to regen stamina faster. It's up to you really. And the last talisman is the Magic Scorpion Charm that will increase magic damage by 12%, increasing the magic damage of the Grave Sights. I want to thank Caustic for pointing this out. For the Physique Flask I have, uh, the Dexterity Not Crystal Tier that will increase Dexterity by 10, hence for damage with the Grave Sights, and the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier that will increase magic attack with the Grave Sights by 20%. The primary attributes of this build is Strength, uh, because the Great Sides with Scale C and Max Level, and Dexterity will be the secondary attribute because you will make more damage, apply more points here than Intelligence. Don't forget about having good enough Vigor and Endurance in case you want to rock a third weapon to reset the Frostbite status effect. If you want to create this build from scratch, I would recommend using a Vagabond, because you will need only 3 more levels to be able to start using the Great Side and has a good amount of vigor right from the start. I'm using a level 200 Vagabond, so the following attributes spread might differ if you have a different class. So I'm running with Vigor at 60 to get to the second soft cap, Mine at 20. I started with Mine at 25, but since the Chill Miss is pretty cheap, you don't need much Mine to apply this as war. Endurance at 35 to have a decent stamina and equip load in case you want to rock a third weapon for the frostbite reset or use a better armor. Strength at 80 to get to that third soft cap. Dexterity at 53. I use the remaining points in here to almost get to the second soft cap. Intelligence at 9. No points here, although you can if you have a lot of points to spare. And that will increase the damage of the grave scythe, but not as much as the dexterity. Faith at 15 to cast Flame Guiding Strength, and Arcane at 7, no points here. This endgame melee build was really fun to play with the crazy damage of Frostbite and Bloodlust combined, and the resetting technique brings something different to the table, allowing to do even more damage if you can pull it off properly. Although you can start using the weapons and get the Glintstone Wet Blade to use the Call Affinity early game, to complete the build, especially Fia's armor set, or the white mask, you need to advance to late game, but there are nice replacements that you can use in your talisman or armor. I will say that the only con of this build is the poor armor you have with the Fia set, and that if you play aggressively like me and get hit, uh, you will feel it. And the lack of spells also can be a problem to dispatch enemies at range. But other than that, it's a very powerful build that you have to try for your playthrough. So guys, if you enjoyed this build, please give the video a like and you will help this channel a lot. Uh, consider to subscribe if you don't want to miss any more build videos like this one. So thank you again everyone and take care and see you on the next video. Ciao!